celebrating and showcasing some of the most amazing people around the world who are doing incredible things to make the world a better place. CU TV News proudly salutes Janet Marie Stanley. Janet is an abstract expressionist painter, transformational energy weaver, and the founder of Open Heart Healing. And Janet Marie Stanley joins me in the CU TV News studio for a one-on-one -on -one interview. Janet, it's a real pleasure to have you here on CU TV News. Welcome. Hi. I'm so glad to be here. So, Tana, you traveled far and wide to come to us, and we <laughs> appreciate that. Tell us about um, what it's like to be an artist fully committed to the art as you are. I know you are very passionate, very enthusiastic about it, but what is it like to be somebody who's so expressive and so committed to the art as you are? Um, well, it's kind of like playtime, you yeah. know, it's a really fun life. It's create, living the creative life is, for me, it's a dream come true because I have a background in the corporate world. So it was a big leap for me to move away from that and go back to art school. And um, I surprised myself completely by becoming a, an abstract painter. And um, so it's always different. And it's, there's, um, the work takes on a life of its own. So I get to just follow along and see where it goes. How did you first get into this work? What, what was that aha moment, that, that time when you knew that this is your calling, your passion, that you had to do this? Was it a series of events or what brought you to this? <clears throat> um, it probably was a series of events. I, I had a longing to do something different, and I didn't know what it was. I thought it would be writing, to be honest. I thought that would be the more natural flow. Um, but I kept uh, coming across flyers for different art things, and I'd really be intrigued by them, and, and yet they felt too far away from me. So I think the first thing I did was go back and take a painting class at high school, and I was just so excited by it that I've really never looked back. It's just been uh, something I really, so really it enjoy. grabbed you right away. Yes, it did, yeah. <laughs> now, you're a transformational energy weaver. Yeah. Our audience might now might be saying, it sounds exotic, it sounds uh, interesting, fascinating, but what, what is, is it? Yeah, what is <laughs> what a transformational is it? energy weaver? Sure. Um, well, that's, that's the phrase that I've coined over the years. It's basically an energy medicine practitioner. For me... I came to that term because um, really it was my paintings that led the way to studying energy medicine. I did a couple of solo shows in Toronto that I, and it was with a col an artist collective, so I had to sit the shows myself for several weeks, and I was, and that was really an interesting uh, experience for me because I got to look at the work for a long time, and people would come in and engage with it and talk to me about what they saw, which would make me see something else. Mm -hmm. And I began to notice that it was very, the word I would use now, didn't have then, would be shamanic. Yeah. It was very transformational, full of energy, was always described as energy, energetic work. And um, through a series of sort of synchronistic coincidences, I ended up um, being exposed to some people who were going to study with the four winds. And uh, um, I just knew. I came home and I said to my husband, I think I have to go. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. when I had that yeah. feeling, I just knew. So I went and studied and I did the whole training within one year because of the feeling that the draw was so strong. Um, and, you know, so the paintings led to the study of the energy medicine, which made me put the paintings on pause for a while. So... This last two, three years, I've been weaving those worlds back together and finding that there is a way to work with both the art and the energy, and that's where Weaver came from. Mm. They're both transformational paths, and for me, I'm realizing that they're very entwined. Yeah, they really, really seem to be, and it's really amazing. This led to the creation of you know, open heart healing. I, I love that name because it really it gives you the impression of of, of warmth, of compassion, of uh, empathy, and 
the ability to form trust with people, trust with, with clients, when you, which of course allows them to then share their story openly, whatever their story may be, whatever their struggle may be, so you can help them. Uh, was that your initial mission when creating um, Open Heart Healing? Was that really what you had hoped would result from it? Um, when I started Open Heart Healing, I chose the words uh, the title or the, the company name because I realized it was a path of heart for me and that and as was making art so the my best work came straight from the heart and what I mean by that mainly is I got out of my head yeah. got out of my my own way because um, corporate marketing had a lot of creativity in it and, and I loved that part of it but it also had a lot of financial planning and a lot of very rational yeah, yeah. thinking very stuff. Very structured, very yeah. logical, very, right. Right, and that was the piece that you can't carry into either art making or energy work. Right, right. It was also yeah. the piece that I felt being in my head held me back in my creativity and in my life. That, you know, it disconnected me from my heart. So my path of my own healing, becoming more heart-centered, um, was what I wanted to share with other people. Was that something, <clears throat> was that a difficult process for you to go from that way of thinking, uh, like in that structured corporate way, uh, to more of the heart-centered way of going about things? Or was that something that was always within, that was sort of a burning mm. ember that was burning within that had to eventually rise to the surface and release, thus creating all the work you're doing now? Well, I, I think it was always there, right? I was a flower child in the late 60s, early 70s, and I started out in social work, and then um, sort of life circumstances, I fell into corporate, the corporate world. Um, and I think it also, uh, life cracks you open. There are things that happen that just make sure that, that whatever that internal nugget or acorn that that's going to grow into what it's inevitably going to grow into, um, gets what it needs, right. gets cracked open in the way that it needs to. So, you know, I had a lot of things in my life that did that to me, and, um, and I'm grateful for them because I think when we were chatting earlier, you were saying how in your life you realize all the things you've done have woven a thread into where you are today. Well, I would, I would say the very same thing for me, and probably most people when they look back, can see how everything has conspired to get us where we're, where we're at today. And with Open Heart Healing, tell me a little bit more about the work that you do with Open Heart Healing. What are some of the different things that you do that really help people change their lives for the better? Sure, so when I moved to the place we live now, which is Innisville, Ontario, I, I, I renamed my uh, art business to Open Heart Studios and my healing, I officially named the healing part of my work uh, Open Heart Healing. And that, I kept them pretty separately, even though I had one name. I, they, they were, I had two separate websites, two separate, there were separate worlds for me. Um, so Open Heart Healing, ironically, I work with, it's, it's evolved over time, but I work with a lot of really creative people. So that was when I started to notice that, that this, they were more entwined than I thought. The people that resonate with me and the work that I do and who are attracted to it tend to have a very strong creative streak. It may not be in painting. It can be in dance mm -hmm. and um, certainly I, yeah. yes. And yeah. I certainly noticed an entrepreneurial um, theme as well. So people who ran their own businesses and tended to work with other people. Mm. So I work one on one with people either in my in my healing room or by phone because the work is at an energetic level so you don't have to be in person although in the beginning I really did want to be in person until I felt I kind of honed my ability to connect um, but it's evolved and, and it's always keeping on evolving but really turned out to be people who are on the brink of making some kind of an expansion for themselves either they're ready to change their lives by making a leap like I did from corporate into something different, 
or starting a brand new business or just uh, really changing, really transforming an old, old pattern. Mm. So maybe they've been in victim mode for a long time or, or felt really held back by some unhealed trauma and they really want to get, they really want to get past it. And so it usually feels kind of like writing a new story, mm. maybe even a whole new book if mm -hmm. that's, uh, if it's big enough. Right. Um, and they're feeling a little bit afraid to do it or unsure of how. And so working at an energetic level can clear the path. It can help clear the path. It's, it, it, it's still fairly magical and mysterious even to me, mm -hmm. but, um, but I've seen it work many times and it works for me. So I tried it on myself first. You did, yeah. Yes, yes. I've had lots of work done on myself and, and uh, it, it, sometimes it's in the moment and you know, kind of instantaneous and you think, wow, I just know that I'm done with that. Or it can take some time and you might not notice for a while. Um, it can even be sometimes years after a message has been given to me through, uh, through some kind of healing work that I don't really understand it, or I understand it in a different layer or level. It's deeper, yeah. um, and it might be a few years later, and I'll go, oh, that's what that really meant. Right, right. So you that get, happens a lot in life, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Oh, I understand what they were trying to tell me, or what that sensation was, or right. why that happened. Right. You know, what's the reason for everything type of thinking. Right. Yeah. And I find that as, uh, with dream work as well. So when you start working in the energy field, you really invite rich dreaming and, uh, and you pay attention. Right. And the paying attention, of course, brings more. So um, it, especially with dreaming, I'll, I'll have a dream that is really imp makes an impression on me and I'm, I'm quite taken with it. And, then, uh, and so I write about it and I think about it and I, you know, I have a dream circle that I talk about it with. And then three or four years later, that same dream has a whole new mm -hmm. level of meaning. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, isn't it? It when is. When that happens, when you it really is. realize that. So you show people how to tap into these things, how to realize, how to experience the things that happen in their life almost on a richer level. Tell us about that process. Okay, so that's a le So when we first begin working, we usually work to clear the energy field, to clear what's called heavy energy. And it's usually through the chakra system. And is that and generally a negative or, or pent up or unreleased it, energy yeah. that's blocking? We try to stay away from the, the negative piece about it because it's, it's, uh, it's just part of being human is we're going to have some trauma or drama that is isn't perfect, healed, right? right? Yeah. And it's really for us because it's the things yeah. that crack us open, that right. get our attention, that make us stop and go, this isn't working it's like anymore. A reality check, yeah. Right. right. And we usually, I think we're moving more and more into being able to learn from joy. Mm. But up till now, and certainly for me, I've had to learn through the experience, and it's often through pain. Right. Um, so some so, people run away from pain. They try to everything they can do in life to avoid it. Sure. But. Like you said, there's a reason for everything. Well, the way we run away usually is by some kind of numbing out or overworking or some kind of addictive behavior maybe or even if it's, um, you know, a computer game. Yeah, you, yeah. you don't want or to face something. Medicines, prescriptions are big, sure. just a lot of right, sure. addictions. Sure, there's a hundred million ways to run away from. Yeah. But at the end of the day, really the only way through or out is through. We can't really avoid it. And if we try to avoid it for too long, we usually invite something bigger in. So it's, it's a good habit to get into to leave space to feel what you feel and, and react to that and, and honor it. And so for me, I think what I did for many years is I worked really hard. I, um, I like to keep my life really full and busy so there wasn't any space to listen in. Mm. And now when I notice that I'm filling it up too much, I really I really do step back and and consciously make space. Take a breath. To and take a breath. Reevaluate and appreciate, in. savor mm. what has happened. Because yeah. we're in such a busy, you know, world now, the lifestyle, everything, the workload it is just is. now everything's now, now, now. Sometimes we don't take time or or we don't feel like we have the time 
because right. we're not going to keep up with everybody else right. and everything else, to appreciate what just happened, what we just experienced. Right. Right. Uh, and we really need to do that more, don't we? Just yeah. as humans, we need it. It's something that is built within. Some people need, need more than others, but I think everybody benefits from being present with themselves and what it is. And with energy work, when you clear the field, when you clear out what we, what we refer to as heavy energy, which is, as you say, it, is, it tends to block the flow of universal energy that's here for all of us to keep us healthy and balanced. Um, when we clear that, life gets easier. We can hear our own wisdom more. We notice when the universe is trying to give us a nudge about something, whether it's, you know, meeting someone like you or, or a colleague or, and, or you notice that poster on the wall about the painting class and you right. think, oh, what if? What Modern if I did night. that? Yeah. Or maybe I need to do that. And you let yourself. Sometimes it's baby steps and sometimes it's really big jump. <laughs> it can be a big, right, it can be just do it. Yeah. Do it. it. It felt like a big leap to me when I first went to what we call a shaman school through uh, the Four Winds. My sister dropped me off at Joshua Tree. I really didn't know what I was getting into. I had never gone to a shaman before. And she snaps a picture and says, well, she was alive when I left her here. Mm. <laughs> and I felt some of that. I felt like it, it was a leap into the unknown. Right. And uh, since then, I've made many, many leaps into the unknown. And I know that I love that now. What is a shaman for somebody that's watching that doesn't even know what that is? Ah, uh, well, what? a shaman is a, an old, an ancient, uh, fairly old word for a medicine person, and I think it's misused a, a, a little bit. So, um, I work with energy, energy medicine, and I, I think more of myself now as a transformational energy weaver. But when you go to shaman school, they, they it's sort of like when you go to art school. The, the, the idea is that you become that when you call yourself it. So when I first, you know, when people would say, when, when do you know you're an artist? And uh, I, one of my favorite teachers, Harold Klunder, would say, when, when you call yourself one. Um, so I, I think that that yeah. was the, uh, some of the thinking behind shaman school. Well, you are when you, when you own it, when, when you, you own step it. into it and own it. But in most, I think, in indigenous cultures, and um, you, you don't call yourself one other people would call you that and that would happen when you showed up and did the work so you'd become known as the person to go to in the community for healing work and now there are so many different healing modalities for people to choose from mm, absolutely. that um, that it works best when you notice where you really feel called where you really feel drawn tell us more about the artwork i find that really fascinating um, so you incorporate the, your artwork into the work that you do. Um, specific types of pieces. Tell us a little bit more about the artwork itself. Okay, so uh, as I said, my uh, paintings led the way to the energy work. And, um, and it was also a big, painting was also a big part of my own healing process, although I didn't, didn't choose it for that or know that that's what's happening. But gradually painting helped me to be to feel more whole and to feel more connected to the world um, and to more trust the world to be a friendly universe. And um, because I was an, a very express, I am a very expressive abstract painter, the work it was always described as energetic. And I knew early on that I was interested in transformation. I was interested in the way things change. And uh, what I now call, didn't have those words so much for is this uh, field of pure potential. So when you're in the field of pure potential, when I experience that when I'm painting, I am out of the way a little bit. And you know, I, what I would say now is spirits just channeling through or coming through. And the painting takes on a life of its own. It really becomes alive. Mm. And I stand back and I'm quite surprised by things sometimes and, and then respond and it's a dance that you do together. And then people finish it by their viewing it because I can have, I've experienced having one painting, the same painting, and someone coming to see me and say, oh, you know, that's beautiful, but it's so sad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and maybe right. they know my history. And so they'll say, that's too sad. I couldn't have that in my home. Mm -hmm. And I go, okay, that's interesting. And then another person the very same day in the very same painting might say, oh, I love that. It's full of joy. It's, isn't that amazing? <laughs> it yeah. is. Yeah. So, you know, the viewer really 
completes the painting, completes it's the work. It's their own interpretation of right. how they see. Uh, it's amazing, really, really is. You, you've tapped into something pretty special, haven't you, with all of this work? I think, I, I hope so. I, I think so. What I think it is, is that field of pure potentiality. Um, that's where the energy work happens. And that's where, if we're lucky and connected, the people that I work with, we go together to that field. Some people, call, it's, I, it's often called the causal field. It's the outer level of the energy field that goes off into infinity, that can connect to the stars and, and you know, to God, if you're comfortable with that word, but the source, the great spirit. Um, I experience it as a, a pulsating, deep, um, very living space that feels very womb-like, and it's where anything is possible. Everything has to... And it's it. There's so there's some uncertainty in it. Some people enter it and they're quite frightened by it. Other people enter it and they're just completely um, in bliss. You know, they just love being there. And yeah. I'm probably more in that field. Yeah. I love the feeling. Yeah. Um, so when I I tap into that and I create things uh, with that consciousness, and I it starts with caring about the person that I'm making something for then it carries that energy. So, and that happened over time and I had to notice it over time. And so it was started in the paintings and then it became through knitted things that I called knitting, you know, painting with wool or making little beaded bracelets that carried that energy for a water ceremony. And now lately it's through actual energy weavings that were influenced by dream catchers. Mm. And so um, they are woven, and when you put something new on the web, it affects everything around it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's just like being alive, mm. because we are all one, and we are all interconnected. And when we work on ourselves, and when we transform something, it affects every life that we touch. How would you say creating a painting is similar to working with an individual energetically? The, the place that they, they meet up is in that causal field. So that the work, my creative work is sourced from that great field of pure potentiality and so is the energy work. And it took me a while to notice that. I, I didn't understand it. So it's, it's because energy is creation energy. And um, to, bring, to bring ourselves into the form that we're in and mold that form and change who we are to you know, go from being a, a social worker to a corporate business person to an art student to an energy worker. These are all pretty big shape shift things, you know, and they all come with from tapping into that field of pure potential and deciding, sometimes not even all that consciously, mm -hmm. but um, the language I would use now is that you follow the energy. Mm -hmm. So you let yourself notice what you notice. Oh, I want to take an art class. Oh, I want to go study this. Oh, I love dream catchers and I love making them. And now, wow, I'm giving them away and people are saying it's making a difference. And following that, and it's evolved into quite an interesting... Um, so now I make uh, and what I call energy weaves, which are three-dimensional, specifically to hold the energy of what's emerging for a person. And I call them full potential weaves. And the, all of the um, vibrational infusion is around holding space, safe space, for what's coming for that person, for what they're expanding into. Holding safe space is an important component of all of it, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I think it's probably the cornerstone. It is. Um, what would you say... In terms of your clients, are they from all walks of life? Are they going through a variety of different things? Or do you even see a common thread with your clients? Um, the thread, it's, it's all ages. I do tend to work with more women than men, but, um, but I do work with men and young men. Um, it's, it's, the thread is uh, they're being at a place in life where they want to make some kind of change or they're feeling a little bit stuck in something and wanting to reach out. And often it seems to be about their creative, um, 
their own creativity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I had a young person come who had just graduated from uh, with a doctorate and was opening their business, and, and that had been a really intense time of study and finding, oh my gosh, I really want to get back to playing music. And so we worked together, and, and then they had a powerful dream about playing a flute mm -hmm. and realized that they were ready and they needed to make some space for that now. Mm. And uh, whether it can be that someone wants to branch out their business into a new way, a new way of doing it, and just looking for a little assistance. So you're in, guiding them, you're sort of... There is a bit of a guiding, but really it feels to me m almost more like holding them so they can hear their own guidance. Mm. Yeah. Because we really know when, right. we're, when we're connected to ourselves and, and in our heart space, and out of our heads and in our own way, we know. And we want it, but we need help sometimes to get there. Because sometimes there, it could be experiences in life, childhood, or, mm -hmm. or maybe things you've been told that make you feel you're not capable of right. doing a certain thing or feeling a certain way or going about life in a certain direction. Um, and removing that, removing the fear, maybe the negative thoughts, maybe the the mm -hmm. words that you've always heard that gave you that self-doubt yeah. um, allows that cleansing process that you're talking about mm -hmm. then it allows you to realize mm -hmm. your potential right. and realize that maybe I am very good at this. Maybe mm -hmm. I should give this a shot. Maybe mm -hmm. I should follow my heart. Right. And it, it usually, oftentimes, the thing that that's sort of the root of where this idea limiting belief started is unconscious and so you bring the light of consciousness to it you look at it and then when you look at it it's like anything else if you don't know it's there you can't change it or fix it so you have a look at it and you and you get to see that wow I let a whole belief system start with that one little you know kindergarten teacher who said no, You'll never you know, be good at the that. sky is not <laughs> purple <laughs> right, right. or whatever it was and because often, sometimes we have, are exposed to something that really is quite harmful and, and deliberate, but oftentimes it's really an innocent a remark. subtle sort of, that you took to heart and really... That at that time, yourself, the who you were at that time, took in really deeply. And then it starts a whole chain of events that come from this belief that, that if we can just look at it and say, you know what, that's not really true. Right. And so... I can let that go. Right. And it's right. it's both small and huge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So and things that again you carry through your through your life. Um, in this expression of of art and and healing and the combination of, of the two, you must really love this work. This must also bring you joy and a contentment as you're helping others achieve and reach theirs. It must just come back to you tenfold, I would imagine. I absolutely do love it. Early on, I used to worry when I had the art world separated from the, you know, was there time for this or time? And I realized it, that it's just such an honor and a privilege to witness new life come in. And that's what it is. When we access a part of ourselves that we've maybe shut down inadvertently, and it's allowed to come forth and shine and expand. It's beautiful to witness, really, really beautiful. Yeah. It's such a privilege. Yeah. It's extremely humbling. And I, I feel so lucky to be able to share yeah, it. it. I absolutely feel like blessed and, and you know, and I get to make art too. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a double bonus. Yeah. Uh, feedback from yeah. clients, people that you've helped, people who have been able to now take what you've shown them and be able to, you know, because you're not going to obviously be in the room with them 24-7. So you, you instill certain things mm -hmm. in them that when these times come to maybe where they are regressing a little or there's the temptation to or what have you, <clears throat> they tap into what you've shown them and what you've taught them. Um, the, these folks that you work with, these, these clients, um, what's been some of the feedback in terms of the benefits and... Okay. And how their lives have changed for the better. Okay, um, you know some people don't feel a lot right away, so that that does happen, Takes a and it's time important. To... Yep. Um, but uh, the people that 
have the most transformational experience. Usually there are people that have done a lot of their own work already and they're pretty um, far, they're pretty mature in their self-development. So um, they will eventually come to feeling a sense of peace. Often the most blissful experiences on the table have a little bit of sorting out to do the day or a couple days after. The transformation is big work. It's very powerful. It's not always really comfortable. But at the end of the day, they feel much clearer and more connected to their own wisdom. Um, uh, some people, uh, I had a beautiful, beautiful young woman say she felt like she was held in the hands of God and she actually blogged about it, which was absolutely um, so humbling to hear and see. Not everybody goes, you know, quite that far, but mostly people say they feel more peaceful and more connected to, their, to themselves. And they're able to go do what they know, what they've, part of them has known that they want to do all along, but they haven't been able to quite get there. To get there, yeah. 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 Now, you're based obviously in Canada. Um, can people access you and access your work uh, if they're not necessarily where you are in Canada? Sure. I'm just launching my new website now, which has uh, the, wor the, the artwork and things and the the session work described, but uh, the growing part of my business is, I think, the same for many energy workers, is it's by Skype or by phone. So you can do that. Right. Technology has really, it really made has. it easier, right? And uh, I, I think that it surprised me, really, how intimate um, working by phone can be because you're in the energy field, and when you connect, it's just like being in person. So. We, uh, I haven't found there to be any compromise in working by phone at all. What would be one thing that you would want to say to somebody who's watching this right now who is maybe on the fence about this, mm -hmm. maybe on the fence about going to the website, picking up the phone, making the connection? Uh, they know that there's work that has to be done within, mm -hmm. but they're nervous about it or fearful. Sure, or, it is. What, it, what would you say nervous. to them? I would say... Find your way, whatever your way is to get, to tap into yourself. So maybe it's, maybe it's in nature, maybe it's in a meditation room, maybe it's just while you're cooking. But get into your own heart and trust that. If you, if you feel a call and, and, and follow up on it, it's worth it. It's transformational and life is just so full of amazing, rich experiences. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you can, if you're ready to expand, why waste a day? <laughs> it's a good way to wrap. Why waste a day? Janet Marie Stanley, you are an amazing individual. You are doing work that is so needed. And I wish you continued success in everything you do because you, as you go about your own life and learn about your own journey, you're, you're touching the lives of so many other people. And it's almost like a pay it forward situation. One life touches another, touches another. Mm. And if you can go through life doing that, I mean, you, you've done it all. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining thank us you. on CU TV News. Yeah. Best of luck to you. Yeah, thank you. Janet says many of her clients are other healing arts practitioners, massage therapists, acupuncturists, and other shamanic healers. She attributes this to her creative background. Long considered a painter's painter, Janet is a shaman's shaman, integrating her art with her energetic practice. To learn more about Janet Marie Stanley, visit her website, janetstanley.ca. CU TV News proudly salutes abstract expressionist painter, transformational energy weaver, and the founder of Open Heart Healing, Janet Marie Stanley. I'm Jim Masters, CU TV News.